Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disney stock dropping. Um, Disney stock supposedly dropping, according to Yahoo Finance, because of the announcements of several movie delays. Well, I think that's part of it. I do. That is part of it because people are going to be like, wait, we got to wait till when to get new MCU movies? Uh, that just tells me that there are huge problems right now with the MCU and they don't know what the hell they're doing and they're probably trying to fix it. Uh, but it's also the parks. Uh, they've been getting a lot of press lately and we did a video yesterday about them jacking the prices of the theme parks and what's gonna happen is that you know during a during a, a, a recession people aren't going to go? Yeah, I think they were counting on the news of price increases as a way to in, you know the stocks would go up because they're already going down. I think they thought well, we'll announce this and the stocks will go up because investors will be like, oh, they've been reporting these record parks profits, and if they increase the prices, that's going to make the profits higher and it's going to make the stocks more valuable. And I think that's what they were thinking. But in actuality, I think most people are like, if they keep raising the prices, the reaction has not been good. People are getting pissed. People are going to start not going and um, it's going to probably lower the stocks anyway. So I think it's a combination of both the film announcements and the announcements about price hikes. Yeah, people are just looking at this and they're like, Disney's future isn't looking so good. And even tied into you know something I talked about over the weekend that with the double edged sword of Disney adding the uh, you know ad supported tier, is that they're gonna have to be more honest about their viewing numbers for mm -hmm. advertisers. And they have a lot of people getting involved now before they could keep those metrics kind of themselves. It might right. come out that their shows aren't getting as much traction as they keep telling people they are. So this is like, you know, they're getting they're getting screwed over seven ways to Sunday. And again, Disney becoming such a, a luxury uh, excursion now, a luxury destination. Um, it's it's a lot of people, if they got to cut back, they're going to be like, you know what? I don't need my $10,000 trip to Disney World this year. Well, I, I think because they've also made it so confusing and so convoluted and so unfun in both planning and execution of your trips. People are just like, I don't, I don't want to go. I don't care if I go. There's other things I can do. Well, this is the Motley Fool that's always defending Disney. Well, it depends who's writing the article. But yeah, yes. but you, more often than not, they defend Disney and they're like, uh, you know, Disney has already been expensive and now there's a variable if you want to actually enjoy your trip and also it's just complicated. It just is needlessly well, complicated. If you want to ride Rise of the Resistance at Disneyland, the cost of the ticket of the Lightning Lane per person is $25. Family of four would cost you a hundred bucks on top of your tickets just to get the lightning lane to go on Rise of the Resistance. Yeah, so let's let's talk about this because their stock is dropping. Here's an article: Could Disney stock crash during a recession? Uh, they're almost down to where they were during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, they dropped, I think it was, I want to say it was eighty-four, eighty-five dollars a share. They're down to ninety-two, and mm -hmm. I don't see them coming back up. Anytime. Uh, remember soon. when they were hundreds of dollars a share? Yes, and we told people just wait. Just wait. It's it's what goes up must come down. And yes, I understand everybody's down. But Disney, again, is, is a luxury item. It's becoming more and more exclusive and it's something that people can easily cut. And they're making it easier and easier for people to cut Disney because of the, how complicated and how expensive mm -hmm. it's becoming. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, over 276,000, almost 277,000 subs. Check out piratesandprincesses.net, objective Disney news. We try. We try uh, everything there. We pay out of pocket. We're not on the, the payroll of any travel agency or any uh, you know Disney people or anything, uh, Universal or any of it. We pay out of pocket. So you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so Yahoo Finance put this up. Disney stock dips following announcements of movie delays, and this is... Uh, I, I kind of knew this was coming. I unloaded my Disney stock a couple of months ago. Uh, shares of Disney are down after the company pushed back release dates for several movies. We'll talk about that. Um, so here's, here's what they're saying triggered it. Disney delays Blade, Deadpool 3, Fantastic Four, Secret Wars, and more Marvel movies uh, for a, a long time. We're not getting any more Marvel after... Uh, what, Black Panther 2 until like 2023? Yeah, 2024. Right. It's part of the shuffle. Blade is moved because it doesn't have a director from 2023 to September of Almost 2024. Year, yeah. uh, Deadpool 3 from September 6, 2024 to November 8th, so that's 2024. Not too that's bad. not too far. Fantastic Four from November. We even, do we even know who the Fantastic Four are? No, they haven't announced it. Fantastic Four from 
uh, November 2024 to February of 2025. An untitled Marvel film. That'd be funny if it was just called Untitled Marvel Film. Yeah, that'd be untitled. It was just a bunch of cameos with a bunch of stingers advertising the next month. It'd be two hours of cameos. Yeah, but they love that. So you pay to go watch advertisements. Oh, wait, that was Doctor Strange. That's Yeah, that's, oh, sorry. Yeah, that was Doctor Strange too. Okay. was basically, yeah. Um, <laughs> Secret Wars has been delayed from November 2025 to May 2026. Another untitled Marvel movie because they're trying to keep the wraps on you know, what, what's going on. Uh, set for May 2026 has been removed. Uh, this is not good. No. So they're basically talking about all the problems, all the problems in the MCU right now. Uh, you know, they had the pandemic and, um, you know, their last couple movies, let's be honest, they, they really didn't do right. very well. Right, and then like with Star Wars, they keep running into, oh, scheduling conflicts and, you know. Creative differences. Creative differences. Creative differences. And we know that, like, for all that we had a plan, they had a plan. Um, they had Feige talking a few months ago this summer about how they all had a retreat to plan past the phase four of the MCU. So it was not all planned. And that could be playing into it, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, they had no plan. They were basically like, let's get to endgame and then we'll just kind of figure it out. Why they thought, uh, why they thought that uh, using characters from 2015 Marvel, which almost destroyed Marvel Comics uh, in, in uh, movies and TV shows, was the way to go is beyond me. You've got... Decades and decades and decades of storylines. But let's just go with the last like five or six years. Mm -hmm. Probably the worst era of Marvel. Well, there was a there was an article I saw. They said that the comics are are, are staying about um, 10 years ahead of the MCU or something like that. And I was like, because we see like Ruby Williams and all these mm -hmm. new characters. And now they're putting them in, in the new phases coming out. So, yeah, they're like saying we're like several years ahead of the, of the MCU. And that's it. That was always the plan. I, I am convinced that they... Once Disney bought Marvel, they were like, okay, uh, we're we're going to use the, the existing characters for now, but we're going to eventually have a bunch of replacement characters, uh, more diverse and inclusive characters. So let's seed them in the comics now. Let's make them now in the comics. So in 10 years, we're going to pass the mantle to these new characters. What they're trying to do too is when the characters do not perform in the comics and they're constantly rebooting them and you know trying everything they can to make them stick – then they're taking them to to they're trying to go to the movies and the TV shows and put them in there too to try to double down to make it stick. It's still not working. Again, mainstream media outlets, Variety, I think, was the one that had or Hollywood Reporter had a article on how in 2017 Marvel Comics almost crumbled because they they basically replaced all the characters at once. They thought it was a good idea, and the same damn thing is happening now, and nobody gives a shit. The only thing people are excited about is Deadpool, because they're getting Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and some familiarity, but all these other projects, like, nobody cares. Fantastic Four. Do we care? Because we don't even know who's going to be in it. It's, you know, apparently, you know, it's not going to be John Krasinski or Emily Blunt. They just did that as, like... Fan service mm -hmm. and Doctor Everybody Strange. Everybody thought they'd announce it D twenty three and they didn't, but then it's pushed back to what twenty twenty five now yeah. or whatever. So three years. They have plenty of time to to keep you on the hook and use that to try to get to keep attention going. So when they reboot the X Men as the mutants in twenty thirty two, yeah, nobody's gonna give a shit. Yeah. Nobody's gonna give a shit. So we've got that out there. We had Abigail Disney out there that walking things back. Um, what is going on with her? She she was on a podcast where she was dunking on Uncle Walt and and saying, you know, he was basically a fascist and a racist because he knew damn well what he was doing and whatever. Now she's all like, well, capitalism can work. Capitalism is the invisible hand that creates a kind of magical surplus when it's worked right. They can still do that without being this, you know, predatory entity that has become before she was all like, capitalism bad. So, you know, people caught out that she has her money because of capitalism. Most of her money is probably tied into Disney stock. But she made a book. <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. But she wrote a book and wanted to sell her book. Wouldn't that be capitalism? It would be. And she had to shut her production company down because capitalism. Nobody paid to see her Because there was no, no, no demand for the there supply. There was no demand <laughs> so. for the supply. There was no demand for the supply. So she had to lay off everybody at the company. It was like 11 people working there. And uh, look, I mean, sometimes I agree with her. Sometimes I do agree with her. We've, we've talked about, you know, I, I do think she's right in regards to the Disney executives getting these really exorbitant, you know, um, bonuses and perks and all that when their workers were 
uh, you know, put out of work when they had to re rely on each other for, uh, you know, food pantry and all that when Disney could just literally cut a check and be like, hey, well, at least make sure you guys have a warm meal every night. You know, I, if I were Christine McCarthy with that kind of money, I would have been like, holy shit, these people are the, part of the reason I got my $11 million bonus. So the least I can do is like give a million bucks to the food bank because. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt you any, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, guys. So there we go. Disney stock dropping. Uh, I think it's going to continue to decline. Because what what is there to look forward to? Well, More I don't price know. Gouging? I, well, I think I think it'll go back up. I think it'll go back up because the next investor call. But that's just my opinion. They'll probably bullshit the numbers again. Um, well, I think that they they deliberately put things like hocus pocus and things when they put it to, to, that it would increase. Subscriber numbers increase revenue numbers and things that they're going to tout at the next meeting. And yeah. I think it's going to, to drive the stock prices back up somewhat. I mean, high, no, but it'll go up. Yeah, they need to get back over $100. But there are so many reasons, so many reasons why it's dropping. Uh, and again, having a luxury service, luxury item, luxury good going into a recession, not good. Mm -hmm. Not good news for you. So we're going to wrap this up. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.